So you might recall the strange situation where the Canadian Parliament had Zelensky, as well as having a standing ovation for a, uh, a mid-century German enthusiast. I can't say the, uh, the mid-century German N-word because it will get us in trouble with YouTube because YouTube is ridiculous. Uh, but yes, I'm pretty sure most people heard about this and the plot has thickened. So Politico have basically ran a defense of this whole event, which I, is one of the most embarrassing I've probably ever seen. It is embarrassing, yes. And I don't understand why they did it, why they had this standing ovation like it was, you know, the Cannes Film Festival or something. But the weirdest thing also, which is a bit ironic, is that you have people like Justin Trudeau and his associates who are incredibly censorious and they want to censor everything and present moral disagreement as you know, extremist. And actually, they didn't catch this. <laughs> it's almost like it's all just for political point scoring, isn't it? It's all about oppressing the opponents and bringing about victory yourself. The yes, fact they don't do it very well. They, they don't because they're, they're, they seem happy. That's the issue. And th there's something wrong with Canada there in the parliament. There are people dancing wearing, do you remember that they were wearing high heels and <laughs> dancing around? And I don't know, I, th I think they're not doing their job well, to put it mildly. Well, that can be said of a lot of politicians, to be fair. But here is um, Politico tweeting out an article saying, um, Mid-century German N-word linked veteran received evasion during Zelensky's Canada visit. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't linked. He was one of them. Uh, he was in the, the SS. Yeah. That's not linked. That's very much being a part of it. So let me just ask you, because I'm trying to understand what happened, uh, as I'm sure most of us are trying to understand why this happened. Um, was there something? Was it something that they were completely unaware of? Was it something? Well, that... obviously, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's. I'm not really focusing on the event itself. It's more the weird um, media double standard here. Of course, we know it goes on, but this is like the gold standard of, of double standards, if you will, because Politico have been really uh, sort of bending over backwards to play defense for the Canadian government, and um, this. Uh, tweet got community noted, um, which is one of my favorite features on Twitter. It says, Yaroslav Hunker was not just linked to the uh, mid-century N-words. Um, he was literally part of the German um, N-word military <laughs> serving as Waffen-SS soldier. This group was declared a criminal organization by the International Mir Military Tribunal in Nuremberg in 1946. So it's not like th there was any... I want to understand what happened. Why would they do that? Because, I mean, of course, some of you on the comments will constantly say, okay, Stelios, we know how they do it. But what I want to say is that I tried to understand if there was any kind of rationale in their minds, like they would say something like, well, okay, he did some bad things when he was young, but they afterwards... They just didn't know, I don't think. They just didn't know. I think it was just poor um, planning on their part. So... On the topic of World War II, me and Bo did a multi-part series, which is very, very good. And I very much enjoyed being a part of it. And I, I learned a lot. And this is um, all about Operation Market Garden, which is the Americans and the British um, parachuting in to the Netherlands and how it went, because it's a fascinating story. Lots of cases of heroism yes. and uh, survival and all that sort of thing. It's a, a, a very fascinating snapshot of World War II. So if you want to le learn about that, um, and, you know, from the Allies' perspective as well, we're not, we're not Canadian. We don't look at it from the other side, right? Yeah, and I must say that I think that there is a movie about this called there is indeed. Bridge yeah. Too Far, which I think has the best cast ever for a movie. It has it's a great Sean film, Connery, yeah. Anthony Hopkins, Robert Redford, Dirk Bogart. It's just... a. <laughs> All the best actors from a particular era are in that movie. But before you see the film, if you really want to appreciate it, you've got to watch this four-part series. It's, it's essential watching, really. But let's move back to this main offender. This is the article that has everyone abuzz. And it, um, this is Politico sort of talking about it. And it says, Opinion. 
Canada's Yaroslav Hunka scandal demonstrates how, when history is complicated, it can be a gift to propagandists who exploit the appeal of simplicity. And I mean, now it's complicated. Yes. And I find this funny because this has been what has been going on, targeted at the right for about the past 10 years, at least. At least it's been amplified over the past 10 years. You know, you, you sort of had it going on yeah. at all times throughout pretty much all of history. But recently, this has been kind of the go-to method. And it's just being stated explicitly here as uh, sort of the shoe on the other foot, if you will. Yeah, it's, as you said, the golden double standard. You get people who get marginalized for actually saying really commonsensical stuff about, let's say, gender ideology and stuff like that. And then you have who are completely marginalized and they're told that they're actually contributing to people being uh, suicidal and stuff. And you have people like that um, and comments like that when they're saying that, well, it's a bit more complicated. You need to look a bit more. Well, they don't seem to be interested in applying this well and e equally in both cases. Of course. So Community Notes also targeted this one saying, um, SS member had to swear allegiance to uh, German Charlie Chaplin and the uh, N-word regime, which would necessarily make them N-words. I, I, there's, this is what YouTube has made me do, by the way. I don't want to have to resort to this. I'd rather just call them by their name. Yes. But um, we will get in trouble, and it's annoying. Yes. So let's have a look at the article itself. And um, the actual premise of it isn't as controversial, but the thing is that the person in question, Yaroslav Juncker, um, you know, historians have proved that this unit did see combat. They fought... Um, mainly in the Eastern Front, yeah. but also in the Western Front against Britain, America, Canadians. So the Canadian Parliament, by the way, would have applauded a unit that would have murdered Canadians. <laughs> I mean, their, their contempt for their own country, even if you know, this might have been accidental. It's not like woke manifest. progressivists have a good understanding of history. Well, of course. Yeah. But, I mean, Come on. That, that is why when they're caught red-handed, they say it's complicated. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, claim it's complicated. That is quite often the go-to, isn't it? And it's, here it says, Canada's uh, Juncker scandal is a demonstration of how when history is complicated, it can be a gift to propagandists. So that's the same byline that they talked about. But uh, it goes on and on about how, you know, just because, you know, a Ukrainian joined the mid-century Germans, doesn't mean they necessarily supported them, but there's also the fact that it's the SS. It's not like they, they joined the Wehrmacht. Um, they, it was the sort of most political wing of the yes. mid-century Germans, if you will, in that they were the ones who were most politically on board with what they were doing um, within the, the military. As far as I'm aware, I mean, I'm, I'm no historian. That's just my opinion. And uh, yeah, it goes on and on. And Bo was telling me actually off camera, who is a historian, that yeah, they definitely saw action. They definitely killed people. Um, they might not have necessarily been involved in the Holocaust, but they were in combat. They were fighting people on the Allied side and undoubtedly killing them, probably mostly Russians. So that might be um, part of the reason why he was there in the first place and invited by Zelensky is that They'd spent a lot of time on the Eastern Front, but they weren't just there. They were in the Western Front as well, fighting us. Or by us, I mean, you know, the British. You're honorarily British for today. But that would not necessarily be a decision of that person. Whether that unit fought in the East or the West, Western of course. Front. That's not up to... It's not up to him, no. But so, it, it, it just makes it worse that they applauded yeah. him, really. That's yeah, yeah. the main point of bringing it up. No, th that's why I'm saying it. Is that even if that person was only in the Eastern Front fighting Russians, it doesn't... That's not a redeeming feature. No. Yeah. But it is also worth mentioning that Ukraine had a lot of reason to hate the Soviet Union, yes. which is part of the reason why they allied yes. with the Germans, is that Stalin deliberately 
starved six million Ukrainians. Yeah, in the Holodomor. Yeah, exactly. And they were the ones who were the food producing area of the Soviet Union. So he deliberately took food from people who were producing it on purpose because they weren't on board with his control. Yes. And so I would say that's a fair reason to hate Stalin among a multitude There's of other no reasons. There's no shortage of reasons to, mm -hmm. to be against Stalin. Yeah. yeah, so if if you are caught in the middle of that, I do understand that you've got to pick a side. There's no neutrality unless you're Swiss. And so the, the people who haven't yet genocided six million of your, your citizens might be the, the side that you would pick. I, I can understand that. But still, it's not... It would be better just to leave him be rather than bringing him in, wheeling him around yeah. and applauding him. That's my point. I also think it's, you know, how uh, they go after like 90 year old um, Germans and they're saying, oh, they committed war crimes. And it's like, but they're in their late 90s. What's, what's the point in this now? Yeah. I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm certainly not, you know, a fan of the ideology and, and their actions in, in history. But when it gets to that point, it's a bit strange. And I actually saw the polls saying that they wanted to prosecute this guy. And he's like 98. I'm just like, what purpose does that really serve? So yeah, I'm not, you know, I'm not being some sort of weird zealot. I'm trying to see nuance myself here. However, I think the whole thing is ridiculous. And the fact Politico is running this and that they're, they're, you know, playing defense for the Canadian Parliament's mistake. Um, and of course, this is also an opinion piece, but the editorial board who decides the tone tenor of Politico decided to go ahead with this and many of the other articles, which are definitely not nuanced, um, that I'm going to show in comparison to just illustrate exactly how the media is weaponizing the representation of ideas. Because here, I'm, I'm not going to go through and read it because um, some of it is just completely a historic. It, it doesn't have any necessary basis in yeah. what the unit did. They're going through in the abstract and missing out exactly what the detail did like they say the history is complicated because fighting against the ussr at the time didn't necessarily make you a mid-century n-word just um someone who had an excruciating choice over which of the two terror regimes to resist i mean that's not necessarily a bad point it's no. just strange in the context of this right no but uh first of all the ss unit was not as you said just uh, just the army it was more political than that, and more course. involved into it. And also, just why? Mm -hmm. Why did they have to do it? Bo also raised a good point that just because um, he wasn't um, proven guilty of war crimes in the Nuremberg yeah. doesn't mean that he didn't commit them. It just means that they didn't have the evidence. Yeah. And of course, uh, it could be that there wasn't evidence, but also there's still some ambiguity there, isn't there? Yeah, but it was a bit rich from the Canadian government to do this mm -hmm. because they are trying to portray themselves to be tough on extremism and they have a very, very, very weird interpretation of what extremism entails. And apparently um, this person was someone they wanted to cheer. Well, didn't Trudeau say that the Canadian truckers were... Um mid-century German N-words as well. Apparently so. There you go. You have the, the past now, truckers. So I wanted to go and look at some of the other articles that Politico have written just to compare their uh, view of nuance when it comes to the other side, yeah. you know, not the, the progressive left. So this is one titled How White Nationalists Learn to Love Donald Trump. And of course, this is trying to build an association with Trump and white nationalists. It's not complicated here. No. No. Okay. It's just like, once they believed he was a secret Jew, <laughs> which I find funny, now he has more white power support than any mainstream candidate in modern politics. Here's how it unfolded. So the, the attempt here is pretty obvious, isn't it? Well, on the one hand, they want to plead um, nuance. On the other, they want to make swi sweep, swipe general... No, sweep general sweeping generalizations. Sweeping generalizations. Yeah. So we're not done yet. Here's another one. This is from 2016. White supremacist groups see Trump bump. I mean, come on. And then this next one, uh, Trump goes off script and white supremacists cheer. Um, 
again, the, the link they're trying to make here is so obvious. And then here we are. Study. Trump-related hashtags dominate white nationalist. Na uh, oh, I almost said it. Um, Mid-century N-word Twitter. So here's another one. This is in 2020. Trump's refusal to condemn white supremacist launches an online furor. Again, it's just Trump not wanting to accept the framing of a, a loaded question. It wasn't that he refused to condemn them because he has condemned them before. It's just trying to build an association between Trump and something that he's not. And finally, this is the last one I was able to spot. This is from 2016 again. Um, this one actually took me by surprise. This is uh, by Michael Lind, so well done for injecting a little bit of reason into um, Politico. Quit comparing Trump to um, the mid-century German mustache man. Uh, so yes, this is my attempt at you know, showing that they weren't always smearing. There were some articles here. I think there's the tendency for uh, commentators on the right to cherry pick articles and say, look at everything bad they've said. And then they miss out sometimes when there's nuance. And I'm not, you know, saying Politico is good in any way. I think they're terrible, but you know, I wouldn't be doing my job properly if I didn't give you a fair representation of what they've done. But I think the, the difference here is quite stark, isn't it? And of course, these articles are written by different people, but the editorial choices by Politico reflect on the overall atmosphere, the politics that informs their decisions. And it's very clear that there's an uneven um, call for nuance here, isn't there? Yeah. I think that that's self-evident from a lot of the articles I've shown here. And that was my main point, really, to highlight just how these media companies will call for nuance when it suits them. But when they're trying to crush their enemies, they're more than happy to overlook details. And I wanted to call this to your attention because this is an excellent example. If you want to prove this to someone like you know someone in everyday life who doesn't necessarily follow politics, you want to prove to them that the media is lying to them. Show them the difference between how they reported there and all of this. And you know, anyone with a half-functioning brain will be able to tell. If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content that's on the site, such as the Lads Hours, this one on the Reddit question. If you'd like to find out what else is being put out, you can follow on Getter at lotuseaters underscore com on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.